Did you know that in German addresses, the street name comes first and then the number, and the postcode or zip code comes before the city? And check out the doorbells, no numbers. Instead, they're labelled with the surnames of the people living there, which strikes me as slightly unusual for this privacy-loving nation. Anyway, for today's episode, we're at home with the Germans. German homes come in all shapes and sizes. They also have pretty logical names. A house at the end of a row of houses is called an end of the row house, or Rhein Endhaus. A house where one family lives is called a one family house, ein Familienhaus. Large houses split up into several apartments are called Mehrfamilienhäuser, or multifamily houses, and that's the most common type of home here. As I've told you before, Germans usually know the exact measurements of their home in square metres. The average German home is a little over 90 square metres, for two people. Five million Germans live in a WG or Wohngemeinschaft. That's shared accommodation, and only 0.5% of households have three or more generations living under one roof. Cold rent means without bills, and warm rent includes costs for certain utilities and services. Germany has long been a nation of renters. Less than half the population owns their own home, and in some larger cities that drops to a quarter. This is in part a hangover from recent history. During the war, a lot of private property was destroyed, so rental apartment blocks were built as a quick fix. In East Germany, people rarely had the option of purchasing their own property, and state-owned property was heavily subsidised. These days, some people prefer the flexibility of renting. Germans do, after all, move an average of six times in their life. But most people cite spiralling house prices and hefty deposits as the main hurdle to owning their own home. That being said, renting isn't always a particularly cheap alternative. In Munich, renters are shelling out around 17 euros per square metre. Berlin has introduced a controversial five-year rent freeze to try and get its prices under control. And some people are getting creative, shunning traditional living models in favour of houseboats, camper vans, communal living projects, or tiny houses. A tiny house is a small house, meistens aus Holz gebaut, zwischen 10 and 20 Quadratmeter, auf Rädern, auf einem PKW-Anhänger. It's aber auch eine Bewegung. Ja, es ist eine Bewegung, die vor ungefähr 15 Jahren in Kalifornien, in den USA eingesetzt hat. Und wie ist es dann nach Deutschland gekommen? In Deutschland gab es ja schon immer durch diese Kleingärten eine Tiny House Affinität. Deutsche und auch Holländer, die ja sehr viel Camping machen und Caravaning, die haben eine hohe Sympathie für, für kleine Räume. Welche Vorteile bietet ein Tiny House? Wenn wir nicht mehr äh, so viel Platz beanspruchen, können wir nicht mehr so viel kaufen. Wenn alle Menschen auf einmal in Holz Gebäude leben würden, hätten wir nicht so eine CO2-Katastrophe. Und wenn wir nicht mehr in anonymen Hochhäusern leben wollen, sondern eher in kleineren Strukturen, dann ist das soziale Miteinander auch ein anderes. Anyway, back to the status quo for now. Here are my personal picks for a few things that make a home very German. House shoes, bottled water, sparkling of course. Weird little mini forks for cake. If the cakes aren't mini, then why are the forks? Solid roller blinds that block out every last scrap of light. One of these retro-looking wooden measuring sticks. A cellar with caged-off storage spaces. A beloved balcony. That's the most sought-after home feature. Two duvets. Very practical. And unwieldy, squashy, frankly ridiculous square pillows. Newcomers often have a few surprises when they move into their first place in Germany. First of all, don't expect a house or flat to be furnished, even if you're renting. And the biggest shock of all might come when you enter the kitchen. Yep, it's totally normal to take your entire kitchen with you when you move. Counters, cooker, sink, everything. One good thing about moving here is that it's a team effort. It's absolutely the done thing to enlist the help of all your friends. The only payment required is beer, pizza, and the knowledge that you'll return the favour. Of course, it wouldn't be Germany without a good set of rules. The small print in a rental contract can include such gems as the exact level of noise you're allowed to make, how often you have to air your flat out, and the requirement to repaint every room a neutral colour upon your departure. If you've noticed anything else about the German way of living, leave me a comment below. Thanks for dropping by.